Please welcome to the stage the Chief Master Sergeant of the United States Air Force and a great supporter of AFA, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Jim Cody. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. General Wells, Ms. Wells, thanks so much for being here. It's certainly always your leadership, General Spencer. I see lots of our senior leaders from the Air Force here today, so thanks for joining us. Um, you know, so I, I'm so glad today is today and not yesterday, boss, where I would normally have to follow you. I know General Hayton had that um, great honor, so I appreciate the fact that I get to be today. Uh, uh, let me really ask my wife, Athena, to stand up real quick here before I get into this. So uh, she loves this as much as you can expect, but uh, it's important that I acknowledge Athena because, uh, you know, we've been doing this together for a long time. She certainly is an incredible airman herself, more than 26 years in uniform. She continues to serve and connect with our families in a very meaningful and purposeful way. I certainly wouldn't be half the man that I am without her and certainly wouldn't be the airman I am. She, she kind of says this a lot to me, you know, two heads, one brain. So, you know, if I thought really good of myself, I'd say, oh, she's really listening to what I have to say. Uh, but really what she's telling me when she says that is shut up uh, and listen. Unfortunately, I hear that more than I would like to, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we're a team and we have been for almost 30 years, so I feel really blessed. So I am going to talk to you this morning about that legacy. The boss talked about the legacy. You've seen it throughout the, the time here at AFA, but uh, I'm going to talk about the legacy of the more than 7 million enlisted men and women in our Air Force and how proud I am of them and how proud each and every one of us should be our nation is. You know, this is a uh, profession of arms. Next slide. When we finished basic training, we felt like we made it through something. We did it. We're done. We made it. You know why they call it basic training? Because that was the easy stuff. We thought we were going to change the world. We thought we'd all live to be heroes. But we learned two things after basic. The world wasn't going to come to us. And just because you put on a uniform doesn't mean you deserve to be a hero. You have to be committed. This wasn't the end of our training. It was the beginning of our new lives. We were airmen now. You hear about the guys who flew the first missions, the men and women who set records, who broke records, who gutted up and did what they had to do. Let me tell you, everybody wants to be one of them. There's a big difference between wanting and doing. You may never be one of them, but you will be an airman. You will serve your country and do your duty every single second of every single day until you separate, die, or retire. And when your moment comes, and there will come a moment, you will change the world. We did. You will be ready. That's what commitment is about in the Air Force. If in that moment you're undecided, you'll fail. You are allowed to make mistakes, but you are not allowed to do halfway. Stay focused. Commitment. Every airman who has worn the uniform, who has fought and lived, or fought and died, is lifting you up. You're one of us, and you will go higher than we ever could. If there ever comes a time when you question your commitment, we want you to remember something. You're not doing this for us. We did this for you. Aim high, Airman. So, so we have this commitment, uh, America's Air Force, a profession of arms. And we understand uh, in our chosen profession that it is a higher calling with higher standards. We defend our nation and win our wars. Understanding, as the boss said yesterday, respect is absolutely essential in all facets of its meaning to our success as an Air Force. We all take an oath that really is a constant reminder of the gravity of that commitment to our nation. We live by core values that guide us in everything that we do. We adhere to a code of conduct. And we have a creed that kind of allows us to think and act as one as an Air Force. 
And those are more than mere words in a little blue book. They actually are the commitment that each and every one of us as airmen are dedicated to. So uh, let me tell you about uh, who we are. And that's not a question, right? It's not who are we, it's who we are as an enlisted force. We are certainly the most educated, most experienced, most capable force the world has ever known. And when you think about the most educated in the 68 years that we have been around, when you think about how 94% of our airmen, our enlisted airmen, have some college. And when you look at the undergraduate degrees, the advanced degrees, the PhDs that our airmen possess, when you think about what we're doing with professional military education to advance it using technology and methodology that is at the cutting edge of how you deliver education to advance the force. When you think about the fact that we have enlisted folks graduating weapons school now. When you think about the fact that we have airmen graduating the Air War College. That is one educated enlisted force. And I promise you 68 years ago when they were talking about the enlisted force, they weren't talking about that, but they certainly had a commitment for us to be where we are today, and we certainly are here today because of it. And General Wells talked about this yesterday. When you think about the most experienced force, 80% of the airmen in our Air Force have known nothing but that 25 years of combat operations. And that completely shapes the force in a much different way, certainly than the time when I came in the Air Force, Cold War type era, it's a dramatically different force with a dramatically different impact on each and every one of those airmen. Look at the level of engagement uh, that we are still operating in today. And I, and I would share with you, if you thought about we were busy a year ago, do the math. We're about 17,000 less airmen in our Air Force this year than we were last year. And if you do the math, our level of engagement is about 5,000 less in certain areas than they were last year at this very same time. If you do the math, right, that means we have about 12,000 less airmen doing more stuff globally. So a huge impact, but you can't do that if you're not educated. You can't do that if you don't have the dedicated, committed airmen and families that are doing this. And I tell you, that education and that experience that we have turns into absolute capability. And how we leverage our airmen today is unprecedented in the history of our force. Think about what they do today and the advanced opportunities. We have enlisted airmen as fellows, as legislative liaisons operating on the Hill with our senior civilian leaderships of our country, influencing and help tell our Air Force story and what we need to do. We're training better than we ever have in the future. When you think about how we have enlisted airmen embedded in industry, learning from industry, we'll bring that back to our Air Force and make us a more capable and better Air Force. It's just phenomenal. They're part of the acquisition teams for every one of our major weapon systems now. They actually sit as part of that acquisition team and shape and influence what they will be for the future Air Force. And when you talk about innovation, and I know General Spencer is hugely in this, when you think about what our airmen are doing, certainly under his leadership and drive while he was still wearing the uniform to enable them and empower them to do this, we have about 5,600, uh, you know, ideas out there, innovative ideas. We've already saved $37 million, which will lead to billions of dollars over time as we continue to leverage our force in the way that we are. So there's no question that our Air Force looks different because of the legacy and the commitment of those that came before us, and we have to carry that forward. But it, we are a pretty phenomenal Air Force and really an exceptionally, exceptionally professional enlisted force and that goes to our professionalism. And when you think about how professional our force is and what they do, it really is much more than being the great technicians that our airmen start out as, and they are. As we continue to develop them into the leaders that they need to be for their nation, for their fellow airmen. You have to think about how the wingman concept goes into that and how the development of the force goes into that and how it's our responsibility to individually develop ourselves and develop others, and our airmen take that responsibility seriously and do it every day. How we leverage that into the future is essential, using things like my vector, right? Connecting with our airmen, giving honest, meaningful feedback, utilizing the ACA. These things are all essential to our professional force. Because if it's just about getting the job done, you can do it a lot different than we do it. 
It's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that in our chosen profession. And when you have people that are professional like this, right, capable like we just talked about, and you really look at those demographics, how capable they are, their professions in that course, what you get is you get some really proud airmen. And Chief Roy kind of mentioned this. This is one of probably the, this is the best thing about this job, and that is spending time with airmen. There's a lot of great things about being the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, but there's nothing, nothing better than spending time with airmen. And this slide should build, but it's not. Uh, it should build, uh, you know, with a, a lot of different um, airmen there that are doing different things out there. But when you think about the pride that our airmen have and what they do, and you get that little ding thing that tells you if the things are good, right? Uh, you know, you, you, you can't help but when you spend time with our airmen, right, and ask them about what they do and see it on their faces. So, uh, you know, there's no place you can go in our Air Force that if you don't spend about 13 seconds with an airman and give them an opportunity to talk to you, that they're going to talk to you about how proud about what they're doing. And you can see it on their smiling faces. And really, we were supposed to have this slide that came up and just looped all these smiling faces. It would have been awesome. It might come around. I I'm not sure. You know, we checked this thing at least 22 times. Uh, 23 was the kicker, I guess. Here we go. So when you look at these airmen, I've met every single one of these airmen, and as General Welsh would tell you, each and every one of them has a phenomenally unique story. But you can see it on their face that they're proud to be airmen. They're proud to be professional airmen. And they know the significance of what they do for their nation every day. Committed to doing it. Will continue to do it into the future. And they are why we will remain the world's greatest air force. There's just not a question about it. But when you take a professional force that's proud of what they do, you know what you get? You get performers. And I can't tell you how many of you, you have heard General Wells talk about this before. It really doesn't matter how we do a lot of things if we don't perform. Right? If we don't perform for our nation, all the other stuff really doesn't matter. It does matter in our force because we do create performers, professional airmen that get the job done for us every day. Let me talk to you about just a couple of them because they're pretty phenomenal. So some of you might recognize uh, the man there on the left, certainly our Secretary of Defense, Secretary Carter. This is when he was actually the Undersecretary of Defense. But many of you might not recognize Tech Sergeant Monique Maltonado who actually worked uh, in the undersecretary's office at the time as one of his uh, support staff. Pretty phenomenal airman. Uh, maybe you just don't know how phenomenal, though. So she'd been in our Air Force about 13 years, single mom, serving, certainly sharp, right? So uh, Monique just recently finished her PhD uh, just, just a few weeks ago to be honest with you, maybe a couple months now uh, from the last time I talked to her. I actually had the opportunity to sit down with my office. I met her actually when she worked for the under, but recently got to sit down and chat with her. And uh, so, you know, pretty impressive, right? Tech sergeant, 13 years, PhD, working for the Undersecretary of Defense. I mean, I'm pretty sure she was pretty busy in that office, uh, given everything that we would expect her to do, right? Making a big difference. So what's really interesting is what she did her PhD on. So he, she did her PhD, a qualitative analysis of the impacts of national security reference to the F-35 in the acquisition process. Now that's impressive. And anybody, you know, so I'm, I can't really speak to this well because I certainly don't have a PhD, but if you're going for a PhD, there's a process by which you have to present your findings to, to, to a group and you'll go through this and there's a few iterations that can happen. They can accept it, doesn't happen very often. They'll come back and give you some feedback. You gotta tighten up your research, you gotta do something. There's a process by which you go through. Monique, the first time through, within 15 minutes of her giving her dissertation, they brought her back in the room and they awarded her a doctorate. That's how impressive this young lady is. That's capability. That's a professional airman in the United States Air Force. It just happens to be a tech sergeant, right? So we also have other great performers. You know, this is uh, just a couple months ago, we were down at Eglin, uh, you know, and I get the opportunity to go out and visit our airmen. We're seeing what's going on with the F-35, you know, a great team down there working with Lockheed as we're bringing this airplane into our Air Force. Uh, and as with any major acquisition, there are always going to be things we learn about the aircraft. As you to put it into operation, more people get their hands on it. This is how we make them the weapon systems that there will be that will fly for, you know, the next 50, 60, 100 years. You know, it just depends on how long we decide to fly them, right? Uh, 
but the reality is, is, so there were some problems with the aircraft, as you'd expect, not major problems, things you actually anticipate, you just don't know which ones are going to hit you first. We had some FOD problems with the aircraft where the uh, air crew were getting in and out and they were actually breaking some of the knobs on some of the uh, controls, but the team down there immediately uh, created, uh, you know, um, some covers to cover the stuff up that eliminated the fodler, you know, put 56 jets back in so we weren't constantly having to bring them down to kind of fix the, the knobs that were on there. But even more impressive, there was a problem with the aircraft as we were putting it through the test. Uh, we weren't able to bring it over 3Gs. It was a problem with the fuel vent. It was collapsing once it got up around that point. You know, nothing catastrophic. Could be if we didn't catch it, but we're catching it as we go through the, the testing of what you do, right? So, you know, if we'd had to go back to Lockheed and had to work with them, it was probably going to be about a six-month delay or longer before we could do that. Well, in a matter of just a few weeks, the team down there in the fabrication shop at Eglin designed, developed, worked with the engineers at Lockheed and implemented. And you can kind of see it on that little table right there. There's some rings. There's some aluminum rings that they spec'd out, and it reinforces that vent. And bam, we're flying that airplane within just a few weeks. That's what our airmen do every single day. We know our business. Our airmen know what they're doing. They're professional. They're educated. And they know how to take the training that they've had, the experience that they've had on these weapon systems, and they make adjustments like this. And that's what you get with a professional force. So we should be real proud of them. And beyond just being professional, you know, we heard some great stories just about the chief. I mean, stories that just, you know, tug at your heartstrings, right? Captain Wise, Sergeant Sheridan, Cameron Stone, I mean, these are just heroes in their own right for everything they've done for our Air Force. But those other airmen are heroes. They're making a difference every day in our Air Force. They're special. Airman Vasquez here, he's a F-16 crew chief out of Mountain Home. You know, he's sitting there, you gotta kinda wonder, what's he doing right there? Well, he's actually kinda sporting his scar there, and what took place there is he's up there in the nose gear of the uh, F-15 working on an actuator that he had to replace and he's on the ladder and he starts to lose his footing as he's coming down. And I'll let you tell, I'll let him tell the rest of his story. Hello, my name is Saul Vasquez. I work at the 366 AMS Squadron down at Mount Home Air Force Base as a crew chief. I honestly enjoy my job. It's a whole lot of fun working on aircraft, you know, getting jets in the air. It's what we do. We make a difference every day. Not everyone can, you know, get aircraft in the air like we do at the United States Air Force. The day started off like any other day. Woke up, um, got me some breakfast, headed out to work. Um, it was going smoothly, and then I hit, missed a step. My arm caught into a bolt, and from there it's just chaos. Sergeant Young grabs soca pads, and just wraps them around my arm and started squeezing to control the bleeding as much as he could. And then Sergeant uh, Aaron came out and saw blood everywhere. Didn't know who I was just because of the blood all over my face. Came out, ripped his belt off, applied a tourniquet to my arm, which is, which is basically what saved my life. And it just sped off towards the UCC, flying down Flightline Road. And so I'm starting to freak out. And that's when uh, Sergeant Aaron just grabs me by my face and starts telling me that hey, you're going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. So I believed him, you know. It was tough, but you know, I, I believed that what he was saying was right. If I was on my own doing that job by myself, I would have died that day. Um, they came in very crucial. They stepped up to the plate and did what they had to do for me, and I appreciate that a lot. The uh, wingman concept has always been important to me. Everyone knows, you know, oh, I have a wingman there who's going to take care of me, but when you're in a situation where you need a wingman, absolutely need one, and they actually show up, you know for a fact that the person next to you, to your left or to your right, is willing to do whatever it takes to keep you alive. Because without them, I wouldn't be here today. So, you know, I don't care who you are, what do you do, I'm going to take care of you no matter what. Every time I look at it, you know, it runs to my head what happened. Man, that almost, ki that almost killed me, and I'm here to this day alive and doing well, 100%. Always trust people around you. They have your back no matter what they do. I can I can have a personnel person next to me, next to a crew chief, and I, I know for a fact this person has my back no matter what. So it's taught me a lot, you know, Wingman Concept is still alive today and it always will be. This is our Air Force. These are our airmen. This, this is what they do and how can you not be extremely proud? So despite the challenges that we might face, you know, when you look to the future, and we have a lot of challenges that we're going to have to overcome, 
There just is no question in my mind, and I know there's no question in the chief's mind or the secretary's mind, that we're going to overcome all of those challenges. We'll continue to advance the force into the future. You know, our airmen contend with all of this, right? So you look at the day-to-day -day business of fighting and winning our nation's wars and globally engaged at unprecedented levels, and then we continue to balance all of these things in their lives, right? This is what a professional airman looks like. These are the things that are going on when you're part of a profession of arms. And they're getting through it. And it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen, right? You got to have great airmen. You got to have great families, loved ones supporting them. Commitment, that commitment, right? But you got to have strong leaders. I'm going to ask the uh, MAGCOM command chiefs to join me up here on stage because these senior enlisted leaders represent all of our enlisted airmen and our Air Force. And I promise you, without their strong, committed, dedicated leadership, we wouldn't be the Air Force that we are today. We just wouldn't be it. This, this group is phenomenal. I can't tell you uh, how proud I am and humbled I am to serve beside each and every one of them. And the things that they're doing every day to develop our airmen, to move our uh, force into the future, is unprecedented. It's unprecedented because there were times in the history of our Air Force that they weren't empowered the way that they are today, to lead, to influence, to shape. And that, you know, uh, is manifested in what they do every day and what you see in our airmen. So let me play this video real quick. There's no such thing in our Air Force as merely an A1C, or merely a GS6, or merely a staff sergeant, or merely a lieutenant. Everybody in this Air Force is critically important to what we do, and you deserve to be treated that way. You're the foundation of our success. We will remain the world's greatest Air Force because you'll make sure we do. And that when challenges arise, that you'll figure out smarter and better ways to get the job done. My new buddy there, the photographer, I met him about an hour ago. But I'd die for him. And I wouldn't think twice about it. Every now and then, pat yourself on the back and realize what you're doing. It's pretty impressive, and you have no idea how good you are. You, you just don't know. Value everybody. Understand that everybody in this business is critically important to what we do. They all bring something different that you don't have. Unfortunately, they don't have this position anymore uh, in the squad. Uh, and yeah, they've upgraded it to a tech sergeant, so we're just going to make them a tech sergeant right now. You know, our nation gives us its, its sons and daughters. And it commits us to defending the nation and its interests. And it expects us to be successful. These are the people who do that. So I don't think this airman, this leader, really needs any introduction, uh, obviously. But you know, every organization, uh, it needs a heartbeat. And uh, it drives the pulse of every one of us. And that's our chief of staff. That's this man. There isn't an airman out there that cares more about our airmen, their families, or our Air Force. Nobody more committed to carrying that legacy forward into the future, ensuring that we're propelling into the future. You know, it, we have been blessed, blessed to be under your leadership, boss. Unbelievably so. Unbelievably so. We would not nearly be who we are without you. No better airman. No better airman. So if I could ask you to please join us up here on stage.
to achieve on behalf of the nearly 400,000 enlisted men and women. We'd like you to accept this invitation to be the recipient, the 10th recipient of the Air Force Order of the Sword, the highest level of recognition that can be afforded by the enlisted force. So I would ask the Chief, actually, and Mrs. Wells to come up here and allow all of our women to come up and congratulate you, sir. No, you can come on up here. That way they can get pictures of you. No, no, no more deserving. So, I mean, everybody, please, come on up. Let's form a line. I mean, that, that really is the end of the presentation. It just doesn't get any better than that. Thank <laughs> you.